What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. It's Katya. Today's lesson is going to be long, it's time, and very special. In today's video, we're going to learn some war vocabulary thanks to the song called The Great War by Taylor Swift from her latest album, Midnight. And I want to dedicate today's English bit to my very brave nephew who is defending Ukraine right now in one of the most dangerous places in the country near Bakhmut. Hang in there, Alosha. Before we get started, I just want to say a few words about my brave nephew, Alosha. He's 26. When the war broke out, he decided to go to war and defend Ukraine of his own free will. He's been at war for nine months. Right now, he is in one of the most dangerous places in Ukraine, on the front line near Bakhmut. Last week was really tough for him and his battalion because they came under attack. It's a miracle my nephew is alive because many of his mates and friends didn't have the same luck and were injured, wounded, killed. One of his best friends lost his arm and two other friends who disappeared were found dead. It's all very sad, heartbreaking and totally senseless. I'm making today's video for my nephew Alyosha and I want to dedicate this English bit to him. And if you want to help my nephew with the costs of some equipment that he lost during the attack, plus it's freezing and muddy and they need to change clothes more frequently, I'm gonna leave his mom's PayPal in the description down below. So if you could give him a hand, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. And I want to thank all those kind people who've already helped my nephew throughout the past week. Thank you very much. I'm eternally grateful. And now let's begin with the lesson. The song The Great War by Taylor Swift from her latest album Midnights that I really like reminds me of the war that is taking place in Ukraine right now. I suppose Taylor uses war metaphors to talk about a huge fight she had with her partner. But sadly for me, this song has a literal meaning. Taylor is an amazing songwriter and her songs are super rich in vocabulary. So today we're going to learn 22 words thanks to her song, The Great War. First, let's learn five adjectives. Number one, bruised. It means having purple marks on your skin after falling, being hit, etc. There will be two examples. The first one is from the song and the second one is mine. The first example from the song, my knuckles were bruised like violets. And one more example here, his bruised knee was making him limp. Number two, crimson. It means having a dark red color. Number one, crimson clover. Number two, he turned crimson with embarrassment. Number three, good faith. It means done in an honest, and sincere way. The extract from the song, you drop some good faith treaties. And two, I'm running a good faith campaign in order to help my nephew. Number four, solemn. It means done or said in a very serious and sincere way. We can plant a memory garden, say a solemn prey, place a puppy in my hair. And one more, my nephew gave a solemn oath to serve his country. And the last adjective, Spineless. It means someone weak, easily frightened, and lacking courage. Number one, spineless in my tomb of silence. And one more example here, Putin is such a spineless and cowardly man. And now let's move to eight nouns. Number one, bloodshed. It means the killing and wounding of people, especially at war. Number one, all that bloodshed, crimson clover, sweet dream was over. And one more example, Russia must be accountable for all the bloodshed caused. Number two, blur. It's something you can't understand or see clearly. Number one, flashes of the battle come to me in a blur. When he came around, everything was in a blur. To come around is a C1 phrasal verb, which means to become conscious again after an operation or accident. 
Number three, clover. The clover is a small plant with three or four round leaves on each stem. In the song, Taylor sings Crimson Clover. A clover reminds me of my trip to Ireland. The three leaves of a clover are said to stand for faith, hope, and love. Number four, a crypt. is a room under the floor of a church where bodies are buried. And maybe it's the past that's talking, screaming from the crypt. When being in Paris last September, my friend Paula visited the Pantheon and its crypt. Number five, ember. is a piece of wood or coal in a dying fire that is not burning, but it's still hot. Always remember the burning embers. And the second example, there were still embers of love between them. You can also use embers metaphorically, like in this sentence. Number six, haze. It's smoke, dust, or mist in the air, which makes it difficult to see through. Number one, somewhere in the haze, got a sense I'd been betrayed. The second example, firemen are used to working in the haze. Number seven, knuckles. Joints in the fingers that connect fingers to the rest of the hand. Knuckles. Number one, Taylor opens the song with my knuckles were bruised like violets. And one more example here, his knuckles were bloody. And last but not least, a C2 noun, treaty. It's a written agreement between two or more countries. The first example from the song, you drop some good faith treaties. And one more, the previous peace treaty was broken. And now we're going to learn six verbs. Number one, to curse someone. It's to think or say rude and bad things about someone because they've made you angry. The first one, curse to, as I sleep talked. And one more example, many people curse Putin. Number two, to draw curtains. It means to draw curtains so that they are together or apart. Number one, I drew curtains closed, drank my poison all alone. And one more example, I drew the curtains and went straight to bed. The third verb, to sucker punch. It means to hit someone with an unexpected punch or blow. Number one, sucker punching walls. And one more, he passed out after being sucker punched. To pass out means to become unconscious for a short time. Number four, to swing. It means to move backward and forward or from side to side while hanging from a fixed point. Number one, and maybe it was ego swinging. And the second example, the flag was swinging in the wind. Number five, a super useful C1 verb to trigger. It means to cause something to start. The first example, your finger on my hairpin triggers, sewed you down on that icy ground. And number six, to vow. It means to make a firm promise or decision to do something. The first example, I vowed not to cry anymore if we survived the Great War. And one more example, the bride and the groom vowed to love each other forever. This verb is very typical and common at a wedding. And in the last section, we're going to learn three phrasal verbs. Number one is C1 phrasal verb, to draw something up. It means to prepare a written document. Number one, you draw up some good faith treaties. Number two, the lawyer drew up a contract in a jiffy. In a jiffy means in a very short time. Number two, to call off the troops. To call off means to cancel. In this case, to withdraw the troops. Number one, so I called off the troops. And the second example, the match was called off due to the heavy rain. And last but not least, a C2 phrase verb, to tear something down. It means to destroy a building or another structure because it's not wanted anymore. Number one, tore your banners down, took the battle underground. And the last example for today, no war was written on the banner. So guys, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching today's English bit. I really hope you liked it. 
and learned some new vocabulary. To memorize all these words easily, please check out the song The Great War. And thank you so much for helping my nephew, my brave nephew, Alyosha. Hang in there. We love you very much. Thank you for watching today's English bit and see you very soon. Thank you for everything. Ciao for now.